is the Hammer Down Racing Report. And now your hosts, Scott Hammer and Ron Miller. Welcome, race fans, to the Hammer Down Racing Report. Part of the Evergreen Podcast Network, show number 318 for Thursday, the day after Valentine's Day. That's it, February 15th. Halfway through February. Past halfway. Past halfway. Wow. March is just around the corner, Scott. Scott Hammer, Ron Miller, coming at you live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter from the Dominator Race Products Studio. And tonight on the show, our featured guest is that guy right over there. 60 years in the racing biz, plus actually with go-kart racing, it was more than 60, right? Yeah, like 63 or so, yeah. It's been a few years. I I never counted the go-kart racing, and I know that's going to offend some of our listeners, but yeah, when I started it, yeah. And we've, we've kind of talked before a little bit about your career, but we have a lot of photos we're going to be showing tonight. So if you're, you're listening to the podcast uh, after the fact, not our uh, live broadcast with the video, you may want to go back and check out the video because you'll see some of the pictures that kind of go along with the stories. We'll and and our listeners can do that either on YouTube or Twitter or Facebook. Right. Any of those three platforms will work just fine. Also coming up tonight, uh, we're going to be speaking with ARCA racer Tommy O'Leary IV. Right. He's down at Daytona uh, attempting to uh, make the field for the ARCA 200 at uh, Daytona on and Saturday. And that's pretty exciting. That's a big deal. Yeah, 50, I think I, I saw 50 entries for that. Uh, that so was there's going to be a few people going I home. Counted, yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll talk with uh, Tommy there. This is the first time he's been at, uh, at Daytona. He's run Talladega. Mm-hmm. He's been at Michigan a lot. He, I guess this is his 30th ARCA start. Now, they did so. some testing a couple of weeks ago. And he went pa- fast enough to uh, pass his ARCA test. So, well, I figure if you race Talladega, you, you're, you'd, you'd be fine at Daytona. Yeah, yeah. You, would, you would think. That's what I was talking to his dad this afternoon. I was like, he raced Talladega. Well, I mean, he's fine. It'll be all good. Uh, also, coming up a little bit later, we'll be giving away some uh, Big D's Pizza with how many. You also have a chance to win a... Uh, we're going to do the uh, special edition. Because really? it's a special show, yeah. Here, let's uh, oh, look it. It's on you, Ron. Oh yeah. Let's uh. What oh, you, what? I'm confused. I think I took the wrong camera. Which camera? Look at it. Look at your camera. My camera. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I got the wrong camera on you. Here's, there now. I got the right camera. Okay. With your uh, your propels right in front of it. But anyways, here's the. Uh, oh, I can change that. Here's the <laughs> the special edition hammer down racing report, uh, window sticker courtesy of uh, DCR Graphics. It's the Hammerdown Army Edition sticker that you can only win on the show. All you have to do is type in hashtag DCR in the comments of our Facebook Live or the YouTube Live. Uh, during the live show tonight, we'll do the drawing at the end of the program. And they can do that now, starting now? They can now? do that right now. Just really? hashtag DCR. All you have to do is do it once, and, and you're entered. You can do it more than once if... It, if uh, you know the trick. Well, if uh, you go to multiple platforms, it'll do right. something. But if you do it more than once on the same platform it's just you're just wasting your your finger energy of typing it makes sense to me uh we got some news uh some results and uh lots of pictures we'll be looking at here in just a little bit before we get to all that stuff gonna mention uh we're charting still apple podcasts uh in uh, australia in our category there thanks uh, again to um Ronnie Red Hat the, Ronnie last yeah. week on the show. Very, I got a lot of comments about uh, last week's interview. I did, too. So, uh, uh, very cool. Always great having her on, even though it's only the second time we've had her on. Uh, but, uh, yeah. If it and, helps our ratings, we're going to do it more yeah. often. Yeah, and I think that uh, there was a lot of people who want to see her get to the States and uh, see how she stacks up against Absolutely. some of the guys here. So, And I'm looking forward to that. Um, she, we, and, and she can bring Carl, and there's a bedroom available at the Miller Family Farm. Keep pointing that out. Yeah. Uh, Oakshade Raceway, where the fastest meet to race. Uh, the UM Dirt, UM, the UM Dirt, the UMP Dirt Car Summer Nationals uh, coming back to town July 13th for the birthday race. And uh, I did get clarification on that uh, American Late Model Series event. Right. That is actually going to be Memorial Day weekend. Ooh. So it'll be that Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. Uh, and then opening night will be Saturday, April 27th. Those are the official... Ish. Ish uh, confirmed dates uh, so far for the Oakshade Raceway calendar. Uh, and, of course, uh, Saturday, every Saturday night uh, we'll be running at After Oakshade, April 27th. April 27th through September 28th. 
every Saturday night. Mm -hmm. What exactly is going to be on those each Saturday night? Most likely late model sportsmen, Dominator Superstocks, and front wheel drives. The compacts with some scattered special things here and there. So keep up, uh, keep up to date. Uh, follow them on uh, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, or uh, key, check out the OakshadeRaceway.com website. As soon as I get the schedule, it'll be posted there for Oakshade. I was going to mention DCR Graphics, of course, uh, not only the sponsor of our stickers, but uh, they sponsor the show here. They do vinyl uh, racing graphics. Full wraps, partial wraps, number decals, sponsor decals, decals of just about any kind. And uh, they're currently running a special to design a car for a new video game, which is coincidentally called Hammer Down Dirt Track Racing. Really? Yeah, I don't know much about it. I got the name and number of one of the developers. I haven't talked to him yet. I got that from uh, Dale today. So, But really? he's, I guess, designing some of the uh filler cars that artificial intelligent cars but right. he's basing them on uh real cars like uh, yeah yeah but we're, and right now it's only late models um so if you would like to uh for him to you know if you have a late model and you want to get that in the game uh he can do that twenty dollars or wow. he can even design you one for twenty dollars if you don't have a late model he can Turn your super stock into a late model and get that in the game. Well, there's a thought. And I guess it's also not only just an AI car, but it's also you can choose it to, to play, too. Well, there's a there's a chance for the Ocho. There is. I gave him permission to go ahead and do that. I, I don't know that much about the game yet, other than it's uh, going to be available on PC and consoles. Really? Certain consoles. So, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, uh, I, I guess I'll have to find out more about that. But if I'm going to... Being in a video game, that's kind of cool. So there you go. $20, uh, you get your own late model design by DCR Graphics. Um, call or text Dale at DCR Graphics, 419-308-9523. Check them out on Facebook, facebook.com slash DCR Graphics. And uh, they are your local choice for wraps, decals, and more at the best prices you'll find. You can also order your official Hammerdown Racing Report window stickers from DCR Graphics for just 5 bucks. I don't believe he's increased the, the price on those. those. These are those are the uh, standard ones that uh, kind of look like right. that right there. And uh, slap that on your race car if you have a race car. If you have a grocery getter, you can slap it on there too. That's cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'll report on uh, where you finish in the parking lot, I guess, each and every week. Uh, you'll be part of the Hammer Down Army. Just uh, take a picture of it, send it in. And, uh, and either of those stickers can get you into the Hammer Down Army. It doesn't yeah, have yeah, to either be the, the... You can win the special edition doesn't, one. It doesn't need to be the traditional one. Correct. And uh, if Dale's listening, I only have two more of the regulars left here. That's why we're going... I still have a bunch of the special edition. That's uh, what we're going through I might here. have a couple of the regular ones that folks haven't, haven't picked, picked up. up. So, yeah. 30 days to claim those. If you That's don't it. claim them, then uh, they come back up. If you don't claim them, I am. <laughs> I uh, also got to mention Dominator Race Products, Freeze Frame Photos, and Ron Miller Race Car sponsors of the program. Before we get to uh, Ron's 60 years of racing, we do have uh, a little bit of action from this past weekend and week to uh, recap. How about we do that? Works for me. Racing Roundup. Uh, Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series was in action last week. Uh, Thursday night, Jimmy Owens and uh, Brandon Shepard both picking up wins. Uh, Jimmy Owens picking up the regularly scheduled feature win and uh, Shepard uh, the Monday makeup feature winner because they got rained out right. the previous Monday. Uh, Friday night was Jonathan Davenport picking up the win and uh, Saturday, Dalton Wilson picking up his uh, first Lucas Oil uh, career victory. 15000 uh, to win. That was a fun race to watch and, and a great post race. There was a lot of good there. racing with, with uh, Lucas Oil Series this week. Uh, High Limit Racing Series uh, tried to get things going Monday night, but rain had uh, other plans. Uh -huh. uh, rain, rain wiped out a lot of stuff on uh, Monday, and it sounds like uh, it's a possible issue this coming weekend yeah, as well. Yeah, they're talking about that already. And, and NASCAR, with the uh, race in in. Los Angeles was move things up. Was preactive or proactive? But I don't. But they get a lot of. Uh, we'll talk about this later. But you got the ARCA race and the Xfinity race on Saturday, and I and a truck that, race on Friday night. So I, you I, don't really have much room to be. Yeah, planned. but I, I think Friday and Saturday are okay. From is what that what I, it is? From what I've seen, but Sunday does not look good, folks. Well, New Smyrna had moved up. They had racing planned for uh, Saturday night that they right. moved back into the week here so i wasn't sure how saturday was look i haven't looked at the forecast down there just 
just hearing things. But anyways, uh, High Limit Racing then uh, got things going Tuesday with the makeup feature. Guess who won? Um, I'll give you a hint. One of the owners. Really? Yeah. Um, of the series. Um, um, and he's not sweet. Really? Kyle Larson picking up the yeah. win there. And uh, Tyler Courtney uh, making a uh, or picking up the win then on uh, later Tuesday night. I've seen some fam very familiar names uh, from area racing uh, in the fields down there, too. So that's pretty cool. A lot of them down there. World of Outlaw NOS Energy Drink Sprint Cars uh, were in action at Volusia Speedway Park last Thursday night. David Gravel picking up the win. Uh, Tyler Courtney on Friday with a last corner pass. I believe that was uh, over Rico Abreu. And uh, Saturday And that night. was a last second yeah. pass, too. <laughs> I, I What was I doing? Oh, I was dealing with work issues so i had it on and i was listening to it oh. but i didn't see it because i was at my and the announcers were screaming yeah yeah so anyway uh yeah a good win for uh, tyler courtney there on a friday night and then sheldon Hoddenshield saturday night's uh, world of outlaw winner at volusia speedway park uh down under in australia toowoomba speedway saturday with josh harms picking up the win in the production sedan class daniel cassidy in the late models and Corey stein in the mod lights tire power manage up speedway don't you have a you, you, i do you brought a I picture do. let's uh let's show one of your pictures here before we get too far to to uh there we go just to show people that they're really well, hold on here let me let me get that there we go there really is a manage up speedway <laughs> scott, scott has a lot of fun with that name so i thought it's i'd fun. throw that picture what in about there. toowoomba i mean that's a fun name too i i've raced there but no picture i feel Sorry. like there should be kangaroos jumping through the infield all over the country <laughs> uh what we've got in deer they've got in kangaroos i gotcha um still there we go Lindsay uh, McCauley picking up the win in the modified sedans there at uh, Manjum Up Speedway on Saturday. Kelsey Beard, winner in production sedans, and Jake Lehman in the uh, junior sedans. Perth Motor Motorplex also in action Friday night. Jamie Veal picking up the sprint car win. Uh, Steven Element uh, in the Formula 500 Saturday night was Jack Goodyear in the sprint cars. And uh, Cody Terraccio in the Formula 500s. Another fun one. Other um, action, <laughs> other action at uh, Volusia Speedway Park, uh, Winter National uh, Modifieds. Oh, my goodness, a lot of <laughs> Modifieds and a lot of feature winners. So uh, here we go. Thursday night was Dave Pinkerton, Greg Moore, Ryan Ayers, Jonathan Taylor, Dustin Sorensen, and Kenny Schrader. Friday night winners, Michael Leach, Will Krupp, Zeke McKenzie, Tyler Nicely, David Strimmey, Jonathan Taylor. Saturday night, Kyle Strickler. Wins the Gator Championship feature event. Tyler Nicely uh, won the Dirt Car Nationals Big Gator Points Championship. Hey, uh, let me try something. Does does that will that work? Yeah, we can use either camera, okay, whichever one you want. Because that one died. It's still on. Um, oh no, it didn't. You're right. <laughs> well, I can bring it up there. It's from black. Where, yeah, not from where I'm sitting. Right, we'll just use your camera then. Okay um because i've got a few pictures okay. that i want to okay. share we'll, we'll do that we just have to move your your drink there and then put that over here for now i can do that there we go um uh, more volusia speedway park action rain postponed the uh, usac amsoil sprint car national championship feature on monday logan Seavey swept the double header on tuesday night of this past week uh devin moran won the dirt car late model feature Bobby Pierce, Mike Marler, and Brandon Shepard each won a feature on Wednesday night. Bobby Pierce captured the uh, rescheduled 25-lap feature win from Monday night as and well. And Brian Ruhlman was in action with his sprint car. Was he? Yep. I did not know that. I know he had his uh, modified he, down there, but he also brought his sprint car. Yeah, I haven't seen his late model. So <laughs> not yet. Left, why not, so, though? So we left some of the fleet at home. <laughs> uh, World Series of Asphalt uh, racing at New Smyrna Speedway. I, I tuned into that Monday was it Monday night? Yeah, Monday night I was flipping through. and Right. Because uh, Volusia had, had a rain delay, so I right. flipped over to it, and I was watching. I was like, man, that sounds like Charlie Crawl. <laughs> so I texted him because he's told me that he does uh, a lot of the, the ARCA races, he right. calls. Right, He'll do from home, and it's all through the Internet. And I'm like, are you home or are you in Florida? 
And I didn't expect him to text me back because he was busy working. I get a text right back in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> well, and Ark is in Florida, so that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, that makes sense uh, with Daytona coming up here. But uh, Friday uh, night, Jimmy Renfro uh, Jr. picking up uh, the pro late model win. Saturday, Dawson Sutton, a uh, pro late model winner. Sunday, Dawson Hutton once again in the pro late models. Monday, guess who? Dawson Sutton, Pro Late Models. Tuesday, Bubba Pollard uh, picking up the win in the ASA uh, Stars Clyde Hart Memorial 200. Ryan Priest winning in the Modifieds. Uh, Wednesday night, last night, uh, Jimmy Hunter crossed the uh, finish line first but was disqualified, handing the victory to uh, Hunter Wright in the Pro Late Model feature uh, at New Smyrna last night. Uh, Katie Hedinger finished uh, in second with that. Ooh, so good job, cool. Katie. Former guest on the show. Uh, and due to the forecast of rain, as I mentioned this earlier, the uh, at New Smyrna Speedway on Saturday, the Orange Blossom 100 has been moved to Thursday night. That'd be tonight, and the rest of Saturday's program has been canceled. Ooh! So they're and they did that, I think, like on Tuesday. Proactive again. Very pro. That was super proactive, though. I mean, the forecast can yeah. change in four days. Yeah. So that is it for. Our racing roundup here for this past weekend. A lot of racing action. Things starting Oops. to get going. Uh, one of our uh, Hammer Down Hotline texts uh, kind of makes mention of that. Something about football season's over. Let's go racing. That's it. Yeah. Dominator Race Products has... what you need goops radiator fan shrouds hood pins if you're wondering where dominator race products is they're just on the outskirts of beautiful downtown lyons ohio there you go about three miles from oakshade raceway is it that close that was a little i don't know maybe I, I just remember that old rest stop that is now not a rest stop that's it, off yeah. of uh, 20 there it's, it's right by that uh Contact Freeze Frame Photos for all your racing photo needs from action shots to victory lane. Custom print magnets, can koozies, tumblers, and other gift items are available. Uh, pretty much if you can think of it, they can put a picture, any of their pictures they've taken on it. And they make calendars too, of course. Still could get some uh, 2024 calendar. You have one of them. I, I've got a 2022 calendar. Yeah, but it's got, see, you kept it because it's got cool pictures. Absolutely. Um, wow, I still have Christmas is coming. I probably should up, update that uh, copy there. <laughs> uh, give uh, Charlie a call. 419-476-9978. Freeze frame photo, special moments frozen in time. You can check them out on uh, Facebook as well. At, uh, freeze frame photos online. If you search for that on Facebook, uh, that'll bring up their page. So. Some of the photos that I'll be sharing tonight, Scott, are from freeze frame photos. I can imagine. <laughs> Some of them predate that a bit. So uh, if, uh, yeah, we're going to talk to uh, Ron now. He is our featured guest tonight with 60 Years of Racing. He's, uh, it's kind of a show and tell special edition. It is. Of the show. So, trying a few things that we haven't done before. If, uh, if you have any questions that you'd like to uh, ask Ron, uh, feel free to put them in the uh, comments. I'll try and keep an, an eye on that. Um. I can't even make that one go away. So yeah, you're gonna have to use your camera there for okay. uh, for the handheld. But we we scanned a whole bunch of photos in. But uh, I guess uh, we'll start off with uh, how did it all begin for Ron Miller, and what year was it? Well, obviously, the go karts preceded it. Uh, I got they my... had go karts back then. Oh yeah, oh yeah. How different were they? Uh, didn't you have a picture of the go kart? Oh yes, I did actually. Let's bring that up. As a matter of fact. Um, anyway, that was a black, that was one of the black and white ones, right? Yeah. 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 They hadn't invented color photos. That's it right there. That's, that's Is that in, you. Yep. That's me in our driveway on, on Dorchester drive, Doran Richards in Toledo. 
They look a little looks a little different than uh, today's go. Well, I'm sorry, I've put a couple of pounds on, but not a lot. <laughs> Where's your glasses? <clears throat> you had glasses back then. No, oh. um, miracle of medicine. <laughs> anyway, it yeah, racing started there, and and we raced at some some fun tracks. But uh, I got my driver's license in 1963 on on my 16th birthday, and. Uh, Obviously, frequented some of the local racetracks, and uh, in 1964, decided that I had to do that. Um, one of now, my, what you're wearing there is that your official race gear? Oh, yeah. Because that just looks like a t-shirt and some jeans. It might be a t-shirt and jeans. Okay, just checking. Anyway, uh, one of my local heroes oh, was. Hold on, let me I let am, me get this off there. Yep. Uh, Go ahead. Okay, one of my local heroes uh, was Jim McCune. And uh, he was he was a racer, and he also owned a used car lot. And uh, one of the mechanics that worked for our family was his brother-in-law. Jim sold Paul uh, a car uh, for ten dollars, and, and it was a standing joke that he didn't have to pay for it, but the state required him to pay sales tax, which was three percent at that time. So Paul paid Jim thirty cents and had this beautiful old fifty. 1950 Chrysler. Um, Paul drove it a, about a year and decided that he didn't need it anymore, so it sat and sat. And like a teenager, I bugged the hell out of him to sell it to me. And he said, all right, you can, you can buy it. But we negotiated, because I knew he paid 30 cents for it, so we finally negotiated 35 cents. And thus... And that was the number on my very first race car was thirty five cents. But I get a lot of pictures here that have different numbers on it. Well, and we'll you're gonna have to explain that. Oh yeah, I'm a little confused um, by that. Here we got a question here before we get too far. Are you gonna do sixty more? I don't know about sixty, <laughs> but as long as it's fun, I'm not. I'm not hanging up the helmet. Okay. And the driver's suit still fits. You know. There you go. Uh, you want to look at some more of these, or yeah, you, you want to. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's check out. Uh, well, here's another black. Well, let's go in order because I'm let's, gonna forget which one. Uh, let's let's go down to that uh, that one more down. This right one there. Yep. Let's, uh, what do we got going on here? Yeah. When I first started racing at Toledo Speedway again in nineteen 19- That's Toledo Speedway. Yep. Uh, I never raced at Toledo Raceway Park. Uh, I I was there a lot as a kid with my dad, but uh, where's your fire suit? Did you take it off for the picture? No, no, no. They they were did not you? required back then. Huh. But you did have What about to, a helmet? You don't you, have a helmet. You no, know, that was still in the car. Oh, okay. It was a full face helmet. All right. Uh that was uh the first feature race that I had won. Uh Bob Loger presenting me with the trophy at uh, Toledo Speedway. Uh it was figure eight car and everybody back then started in figure eight, whether it was John Anderson, Jerry McCara, which were all very popular racers back in the day, they all started in figure eight and, and worked their way up. So that was where I started. Now, I don't know. Yeah. If you scroll up to this one. Yep. Um, that was, hey, why is that a 34? Um, back then they had a rule that you could only have one car with a number and 35 was already taken by, by Ed Howe. So I went down one to 34. Well, how'd you have 35 in that other picture? There, that was a different class. Oh, I got you. What classes? What are we Th- looking this, at here? This was a half mile car. Uh, they called them late models at the time. Uh, they weren't supers like now, but that was pretty much your traditional uh, late model back in uh, the early 60s, early to mid 60s. And how big was Arrow in that kind of car? Not existent. <laughs> it did have a windshield, though. I see that. And where, where'd you race this then? That was, this was that an was, asphalt that, car that, then. Yeah, right? that was asphalt, Toledo Speedway. That car never made it to Flat Rock. If you go down one picture, uh, was the car that we raced uh, a couple of years, uh, oh, in about 1968, I'm sorry, 1969 and 70. Uh, John Anderson was a very popular racer. He drove... Uh, for the McNutt brothers, and they had a shop just down the street from where uh, my dad's service station was, and uh, we'd go down there at night, Ornery Don and I, we'd go down there at night 
and scope out what they were doing, then run back to our shop and copy it. Um, just dumb luck, but it, it was a really well-handling car. We raced Toledo and Flat Rock with that car. Uh, we raced uh, Sandusky once at their cavalcade with it. Um, but I, I was deeply entrenched in in pavement late model racing at that time. So that was a late model? That was a late model. As well. Okay. Absolutely. I don't know if you've got a number three car in there. Um, I had, there we go. One, oh, there you go. This one? Yep. I had gotten a ride uh, with a local race car. That was an ARCA car in uh, 1970, 71. Is that at Flat Rock? Uh that could, I, I'm, I'm not sure. kind of big, but. Could be Toledo. Okay. I think it is. Anyway, uh, I was doing pretty well in ARCA, uh, winning some heat races. And now, did ARCA have, ARCA was a national series still it back It was. Then. John Markham uh, was, was the president. Now, were were you following that around or just running the local no, races? No, I was, I was following it around. Really? On, on, on the short tracks. I hadn't okay. run any big tracks. We were in a process uh, of building a car for Jerry Scott. Um, and the opening race would have been, uh, at Texas world speedway, but the company I was working for at the time, uh, transferred me to the Albany, New York area. Um, and we got to Albany, New York, and there was uh, no pavement racing at all. Everything was dirt. So had you not moved to New York, you may have your career may have just been asphalt. I, I, I was, absolutely. I was, I, um, with the 35 car, I had run one race at, uh, at Finley, uh, Millstream Speedway, uh, on dirt. And that was the only dirt race I had run when I moved to New York. Now, when I moved to New York, um, th- there was just nothing for pavement. So we were, I was, we were having dinner one evening and I have a question uh, about this one. Okay. What, what is that? That was... Because that looks a little old. That was a car, and that was probably 1953, 54 era. My dad owned that car. That little Jeep was his. Uh, the thing towing it? Yes. Okay. Uh, Curly Stoikoff was the driver. And uh, my dad took me to the races and he dropped me off at the front gate, six, seven, eight years old and, uh, pick me up after the races. And, uh, at, at, like I say, at that point, Jim McCune was my superhero. So, uh, <laughs> I, I watched a lot of racing when I was preteen. Gotcha. Um, anyway, so, so you moved to New York, New York. Yeah. Now you, there's a, a blue number one East coast modified. I know you might be got, at the top. Yeah, uh, this one? Yeah, that one will do, but... <laughs> That'll do? That's a 35. No, it was a number one. Yeah. Um, this one? There it is. There it is, yep. Um, got to New York, and sitting at the dinner table, I heard the unmistakable sound of a race car engine. I excused myself and uh, followed the sound down to a garage behind the neighbor's house, and I walked in and saw a car pretty similar to that. How old were you when you moved to New York? Mm, it would have been 1972. All right, we'll so. just stick to years. We don't have to give me yeah, age. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Early 20s. Gotcha. And uh, and how many days after, I mean, how many days had it been since you moved there? Was this like maybe a months month or? Month. Okay. Yeah. Um, and I heard this noise, engine noise, followed it, and I saw a car look very similar to that. Uh, talked to the guy that was working on it. And uh, turns out he was a, a, a carpentry contractor and uh, had a car. And uh, we got to talking. He said, have you ever run dirt? I said, oh, heck yes. And I remember at that point in my life, I had run one race at Millstream Speedway. So you weren't hit- lying. No, no, no. <laughs> uh, he said, would you like to try this? And uh, I said, certainly. I can drive anything. You know, the, all the brashness of of an early twenties guy that, uh, had had some success in racing. So we, the, the first race we went to the following spring, 
uh, was at Lebanon Valley, which is kind of like Winchester, only it's dirt. It's big banking, very fast, run it at the wall, and that track and I, at that point, did not get along. The next week it rained out, and we went to Fonda Speedway, which is about the same distance away from home, and the track and I absolutely clicked. Um, How big a track was it? It's a a fairgrounds track, so it was a big half or a five-eighths. Unique shape. One and two is oval. You go into turn three, and then there's a short straightaway before a sharp turn to turn four, four, getting off into the straightaway. Anyway, we ran all of that year with the remainder of that year with his car. Over the winter, he cut a deal with Will Cagle. Uh, Will Cagle was a, a really top-notch racer, and uh, we acquired one of his cars, and that's what that number one car is. That one. That's one of Will's cars that we repainted. Uh uh, by the way, I, I did win Rookie of the Year at Fonda Speedway. Dick Bergeron uh, presented me with really? the, with the trophy. Yeah, the guy with the the uh, the hat. No, no, no. Dick Bergeron uh, was an announcer on yeah. on MRN. He, yeah, yeah, but he, he had like a oh a bro- yeah, a yeah. What kind of what are those called? The, the weird yeah. hat he always. Yep, wore. yep, yep. You're right. I thought you were talking about the hat guy. No, no, not we, hat guy. No, that's hat, another we story. Hat, we had hat guy on the show, too. <laughs> anyway. And if were, you haven't checked out that episode, I highly recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we raced around the uh, upstate New York area for several years, and uh, I, I left the ride with, with Ken Myers and went to uh, a number 10 car, which was owned uh, by a guy that owned uh, a bowling supply. And... Uh, it was coincident. What color was it? Uh, mostly white. I thought you had it. Thought I'm I sure did you too. did. This it, one? No, no. It it was a it was a, a East Coast modified kind of car. Anyway, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it was. It's it's hard to see. It looks like it, a gremlin. It, and it, and they were they they used a gremlin roof and the rest of the body was fabricated. Uh, that was in the transition from the coupes like the like the number one to uh, the fabricated bodies like this. And this is still seventies then. Uh, yes, mid seventies. Um, we had an opportunity to uh, start racing up in Canada at uh, three tracks: Drummondville, Sorel, and Three Rivers. And uh, all three of the tracks were owned by the same promoter, but he also owned a motel. So we we'd go up the first night, um, which was the closest track uh, to our home base in Schenectady, New York, and uh, we'd race there. Go to his motel. We had a, a free night, complimentary. Nice room. Um, Just because you raced at his track? Yeah, okay. yeah. Because he did loved, do that for all the drivers. Well, he loved the Americans coming oh, okay. up there. We got a small stipend to you know, I think it was hundred bucks a night. I don't know, but uh, of course it was mid seventies, and a hundred bucks went a whole lot mm-hmm. farther. Um, so we'd go to the first night, hit his his motel, which also had a pizza place next to nice. it so so we'd spend most of the money that we made at his pizza place uh the second night was just uh like five miles away from his motel uh and then we'd go to three rivers which was the farthest one away um and then after the races we'd drive like six hours back to schenectady just in time to get to work and go race but it was it was an absolutely fantastic summer scott uh, and, and those were all dirt tracks they were Nice. And you ran this car? Yep, I did. Okay. That was the 10-pin 10, 10 special. Uh, How many feature wins did you get with that one? Two or three. Not a lot, okay. but uh, and, and we had a great time. So uh, did you forget about asphalt racing at this point? Uh, again, or? there was no real... But, I mean, ra- was the urge there to, you know, man, I wish I could... This is fine, but I, was, I wish... Dirt racing hooked me. Okay. It, it really All did. Right. That's what I wanted to okay. get Okay, you wanted to hear that. <laughs> so we came back to Toledo... Uh, in nine or in 1982, uh, my dad was still running the service stations, but was diagnosed with uh, terminal lung cancer, and he wanted me to come back and take over the family business. So, didn't you have came, a picture of the the one gas station? Or yeah, that was uh, one of our stations. Okay, that was the first one that my dad opened in 1946. Uh, a year before I was born. Where was uh, that at? 
Burdan and Haverhill. Okay. Uh, Haverhill at that time dead ended down into our service station. The roller skate was a roller skating rink was right next door. A lot of a lot of our older folks will remember that <laughs> one. But uh, we had that one. We had uh, one at uh, Bancroft and Upton, and another one on Lewis, uh, right across from where my dad moved uh, his shop uh, when he got away from from gas stations. So, and again, these are all in Toledo for, oh yeah. for our listeners in Australia. Oh, abso- absolutely. Canada. Be, yep. be, I, I, I don't did, know where those roads are. <laughs> I, I didn't have any servos in Aussie. <laughs> so anyway, uh, came back here and uh, we kind of picked up our, our racing. What year was it you came back then? 1982. 82, okay. So uh, I built a couple of cars for Toledo Speedway. Had a lot of fun. Um, a fellow that worked for me, um was also also owned a, a dirt car that'd be that uh number well wow, where was that weird car that you asked me about the the, the weird car the, i asked the, you about the silver car oh yeah hold on let me find it. whoa you lost it i made them all go away this one right here yeah uh that was the first car that i drove on dirt when i got back from new york uh ron gravel owned that car and uh, asked me to run it at uh, a season ending race at Fremont. That's Fremont there. That's Fremont. And you won. And I won. Where's, where's your number? Uh, I don't know what the number was on that one. <laughs> Miller, apparently. Yeah. It was Miller time. Is there a number? I can't tell if there's a number on the tail or not. It doesn't look like it must've been on the other side. Yeah. Grandstand yeah. side. Okay. And what class uh, was that then? <sighs> Kind of a street stock. Was that? Uh, did they run that uh, weekly then at Fremont? Yes. Back then? Okay. Yeah. And if you go down a couple of cars, there was a red double zero. Did I pass it? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, this there one? you go. Yep. Looks orange. I guess it is red. No, it's red. Um, the following year, they had a the, the same group: Rick Collins. Uh, Dan Brisky, uh, some some real dedicated racing fans bought that car and they wanted me to drive it. So we drove that, ran that the entire year of '83 at Oakshade, uh, and maybe into '84. And and I, at that point, I knew that I loved Oakshade, Scott. It, it was why a, it it was a fun place. The the racing was great. It was kind of a throwback. Um, even in the eighties, it had that nineteen sixties feel to it. It didn't even open till seventy six. <laughs> but but there was that nineteen sixties racing feel to it. Okay. Um, we won a bunch of features. In was that that, that photo at uh, at Oakshade? Yes, it was. I, I'm pretty sure. Been walls when they had walls around the corners. Yeah. That's before my time. Yeah. And uh, okay, go over to that one where you're at now. This one. Yeah. That was a car that we built. Uh, Look at that spoiler. Yeah. They called those limited lates back in okay. the day. Um, and uh, we built that. That was the first car that we built from scratch for, for Oakshade. And, again, we had a lot of lot of success with that car. And back, th- uh, back to the 35 again. Yeah. Now, if you go down one more, there's that car at Oakshade. In a in a race that was sponsored by uh, uh, the folks that owned um, the race shop up in uh, Racers Connection. Oh, the Baileys. Con- Con- yeah. Well, it was before the Baileys. Continental Service. Oh, okay. Continental Service owned it, but they also owned you seem to be Racers. missing something in in this yeah, picture. I, I was, <laughs> and and that was actually a post race picture. Did you um, win? Yeah. I, <laughs> That's what the car looked like? I, I remember sitting. Is that you in there? Yeah, it is. Wow. I remember sitting there. Uh, they used to be, they used to allow you to stop at the pit entrance and your crew could come out and. Like a hot the, pit? Yeah. Yeah. So it was the first lap of the race and I got tangled up in somebody else's mess. And so I stopped there and Ornery Don came out and kind of pointed that the wheels were pointed in the right direction. So my son, Steve, and one of his buddies started ripping off body panels and that's what it looked like. Okay. So they've, 
It was just crumpled before then. That's what the rip the body panels ripped yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, I uh, actually, I think you had a picture of it, but that's that's what we looked like at the start <laughs> of the night. Uh huh. And and that one is what it looked like. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We won. We won a bunch of races in that car too. The ad fab on the side of that, that's an interesting story. When we I like the mustache. That's my favorite I know, part. I know. <laughs> Anyways, what's the what's the ad fab? When 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 I came back from New York and Don Ornery Don and I started uh doing some racing ourselves, uh we started a, a little business called Ron and Don's Anything for a Buck, race car engineering and wheel repair. And actually, we were kind of growing and, and doing okay with the business. And Don, working for uh, an electronics company, came up with an opportunity to make instrument booms that were mounted on big presses in a factory so that no matter where the operator was working, they could move the, the uh, display screen around. Gotcha. So we made these for a company called Ford Motors. But, but we couldn't go Never into, heard of it. we couldn't go into Ford Motor Company calling ourselves Ron and Don's anything for a buck race car engineering <laughs> and wheel repair so we acronymed it to ATFAB and we were ATFAB for a lot of years um nice we uh Kirby wants to he's Where's, where's your, did you have goggles? Did you take them off? I, no, Got I the did. open, the open face mask. It, it was an open, it was an open face helmet with what I called a monkey mask. It was a leather mask with goggles built into it. Nice. Um, and you'd take a elastic and a couple of, uh, lens goggles and hold those and, and put those over your helmet. So they were kind of reusable tear offs. And that was before open face or full face helmets were, were a big deal. Can you read that without your glasses? I can't. Uh, so all your cars leaked oil little. Absolutely. <laughs> they mark their territory shorty. Uh, Dave Parrish wants to know if you ever ran uh, Brian motor speedway and Brian, I uh, did. We ran Brian speedway. Uh, Roddy Schroyer and I had some great times there, uh, in, in the semi late days. Um, limited late models. That's where I first started That's going right. to dirt car races. Yeah. Roddy Schroyer and I, uh, we were pretty dominant there and whoever got out in front first would kind of wait for the other one. Um, and then we'd go race and, uh, ornery Don and, and my wife would be absolutely furious. You got to cut that shit out. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, but she it, didn't want you to wait for the other one. It was a great time, Scott. It really was. It was when racing was really, really fun. Not that racing's not just, fun now. For, but. Just, that's from my childhood. And I remember Larry Stark, the flag guy's uh, curly mustache oh, yeah. thing. I was like, this yeah. is weird. <laughs> anyway, back to that car with the side ripped off of it. Mm. I was sitting there with the engine off and, and I could hear Larry Jewett, who was the announcer at Oakshade mm -hmm. at the time. He's now down in yeah. Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the, what a shame for Ron Miller. He's obviously out of this one and, uh, fired it up and started back at the back and we won it. <coughs> I know I've still got the, the, the plaque from, uh, continental services, uh, with that. So, uh, 80s, you're back, you're running Brian, Oakshade, uh, where else are you running? Any place they'd have us. Millstream, were they running? Uh, yeah, we were, we were at Millstream, so, and, uh, if you go to that 35 with the, the blue and, and pink, I think you've got that one. 35 with the blue and pink. This one? Yeah, up one. Oh, that one, one will work, well, yeah. Both of these are the same. Here we go. Well, We'll do this one first. Okay. Uh, that was uh, 1992, uh, and Oakshade was still running limited late models uh, on a... That's a limited late model? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. They, they ran They ran limited late. What's lates. limited about it? Not much. Okay. They ran limited lates on Friday and full-blown late models on Saturday. I was back uh, and, two day uh, week, and two they day. allowed the limited lates to run both nights, hmm. uh, kind of field fillers. But for some reason, we ran better with the late models than we did with the limiteds. Same car, same tires, same package, but we always did better. 
Um, back then, we were also running Butler. Butler was running on Friday nights. We'd go up to Butler on Fridays and, and make some pretty good money, which would allow us to go to Oakshade uh, on Saturday and buy some good tires and, and run well there. Butler was oil dirt back then and real abrasive, so you could run darn your worn out tires hmm. uh, and they would work. Uh, and that, that allowed us to have pretty decent tires for Oakshade. And that 92 was the first year of Wiley's racing products. I partnered up with Tim Miller. Um, and that was when I uh, broke away from Ron Miller race cars for actually it was at fab at that time broke away from at fab and uh, Wiley's racing products uh, took off really well. And, and due to circumstances beyond my control, um, Wiley's didn't last long. Um, so, and that was when I, rather than going back to at fab, I started with Ron Miller race cars and we haven't looked back. Hmm. Very nice. So this, uh, what year, this is, uh, early nineties. Yeah. 90, probably 92. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, since then you've been running Oak shade and uh, yeah, the late models and, and actually, uh, so some, you've been running late models since the early nineties. then. Yes, absolutely. Some of the, uh, other late model stuff, uh, I didn't scan too many of the, the newer stuff. No, I was I trying to that. get some of the older stuff you know, there. Oh, let me one, get this, this out there. Uh, there you go. You know, That's pretty th recent. This is a couple of re couple of couple of years ago, but one of the biggest joys of, of racing is right now is racing with my son Steve. And uh, neither one of us will give an inch. You know, and we haven't talked about going to Australia either. Australia, uh, we went in nineteen ninety nine. Um, they asked us to go over. Is that Australia? Yeah. Yeah. Here's another picture of that car. Actually, that was, um, this was 99. Okay. Um, they were getting started in late model racing and, uh, asked Roddy, Roddy and Roddy and Todd Schroyer and I to go over and, uh, race their, their car race against them. And that was the first time the Americans had gone over, uh, and raced dirt late models prior to that. When the other guys went over from the United States, uh, they were racing super sedans. And we've talked about that, in which are native to, to Australia. Right. And you kind of brought the American late model, dirt late models. And, and I, to I Australia. put on a couple of chassis seminars and Roddy Schroyer put on a driving clinic, uh, Hiking the left front up in the air, absolutely showboating. But uh, Didn't, I think there was a, a flyer in your pile of stuff there that had like headshots of you guys, and you guys looked. For, even though that was only what uh, twenty five years ago, you guys looked uh, very very young, especially know. Roddy. <laughs> that was there's Todd Troyer and Ron there on the left. Yeah, that was the the very first USA tour in Australia running dirt late models. And uh, we showed them that they were really on the wrong page. They, they had read the USA rule book and thought that they were, thought that they were on the same page as us. And we went over and showed them that they weren't, and they have really, really brought their program up. I don't think there's any American that could go over there right now and be totally dominant. Awesome. Well, in a couple of minutes, uh, we're going to be, uh, getting a check-in live from Daytona. That's cool. From uh, Tommy O'Leary. But so I just want to prepare you for that. I still want to yeah. go through some more of these photos here. And oh everything, yeah. But uh, uh, we may have to take a, a break for that. And, and here we in a can second. do that. Uh, did you want to show some more of those, or can I go through some of these? Because I, I got questions. I has I has questions. Here. Let's... This is kind of a nasty photo, but that was again. Uh, one one of our pavement late models back. Uh, that one it was the car just before the Chevelle, so that would have been I don't know seventy, maybe early seventy one. Wow, and those they looked, were those were late models, one. and that was when Harold Cook and Ron Dewitt when There's, they uh, when they were racing at, when they were first starting racing at, at Toledo Speedway. We were all rookies the same year in the late model division. That was just a few years ago. Then. Oh, yeah. 
And that this is that your first car again uh, from when you were racing in New York, right? Yes, sir. Okay, just a black and white photo to make it look like it was. Yep. From the sixties. What's going? On? What's going on with this one? What what is what car is that and and what are you doing? Because I think those rear wheels are supposed to. Uh, oh, we're gonna have to come yeah, back to that. that. That actually was a trip to the hospital. Oh, <laughs> stay tuned for that. Yeah. Right now we're going to uh, get to Mr. O'Leary here. Yeah, this that is my ringtone. Hammer down racing report. Hey, how's it going? Good. Is this? Hey, Tom. <laughs> yes, it is. How you doing, buddy? Oh, doing good. Living the dream down here. Uh, you had practice uh, this afternoon for the uh, the ARCA race? Yep. We uh, we had practice and uh, just getting the car through tech. Now, have you got the good motor in now? Um, yeah. Yeah, the one in practice wasn't very good. Oh. Um, so we uh, that, when testing in uh, January, that one uh, let go. So they got a fresh uh, legacy motor put in it. We don't have an SB2 or uh a Elmore engine, but we were lucky enough to be the fastest uh, out of all the legacy engines. I was going to ask, uh, you had practice, uh, how, uh, where'd you stack up? Uh, I guess there's 50 drivers entered in, uh, for this weekend? Um, there was 52. Um, 52. Then they had uh, 50 on grounds, and uh, we ended up being 44th quick. Uh, we only ran five laps. So we uh, had no drafting or anything, but we were fast enough to uh, make it. Um, so it looks like we're going to be having a, a good starting spot. So we'll be making it uh, around, I think, the we'll get the fourth or fifth provisional. Okay, there is provision. You're not uh, you're not planning to be able just to uh, to uh, qualify in on or get in on your time. Um, no. Uh, if if practice gets rained out or uh, if qualifying gets rained out uh, tomorrow, they'll fall back on everything today. We were talking um, about that, so, early, Tommy. We were talking about that earlier in the show. How's the weather looking for for both qualifying and for Saturday? Um, for Saturday, I believe. We just looked a little bit ago, and we got a 70% chance of rain all day. Ouch. Um, yeah, so it's not looking good for the actual race as of now, but it is Florida, and weather changes mm -hmm. all the time. Oh, right. um, yes. Uh, tomorrow, there is like a 5% chance, so... It looks like we'll get qualifying in tomorrow. Now, there's a truck race tomorrow, too, correct? Tomorrow night, yeah. Yes, tomorrow night. Okay. So, uh, this is your uh, first attempt at making Daytona, but you've run other super speedways. And uh, uh, talking to your father earlier, he said this is uh, your 30th uh, ARCA start. Yep. This is, once I take the green at uh, Daytona this weekend, it would be my 30th career start. That's pretty cool. Yeah, what? Uh, so he said you you've ran ran Talladega. I'm assuming that Daytona is similar to uh, Talladega as far as the speeds go. Um, what is that like? I mean, what what's what's the experience like going near almost 200 miles an hour? Um, it is it is a rush. The only way I can really explain it is uh, when we're running at our local short tracks and running on a three-eighths quarter mile and sometimes a half mile at home, we don't experience the G-forces that we do here at Daytona. Um, you you feel the blood leave your head when you go into that turn the first time, and then you just get used to it. It is uh, it is one one hell of a rush. So if, uh, if you, you make the field then uh, for uh, Saturday's race, have uh, you talked to any of the other drivers? I mean, is there any kind of like uh, potential plans or teaming up, you know, for, for drafting partners? Um, I'm looking to run with Brad Smith. Um, we're, uh, we're pitted with him in the garage area right now. And uh, they, uh, he drives uh, James Hilton's old number um, and just through the years when I raced, uh, back in 2011 and 2012 um i became really good friends with all of them so it's uh mainly a comfort thing for me to drive and 
run next to somebody that I'm used to. Scott, we uh, last year about this time we had a a fella on from Michigan uh, who owned a donut. Scott Melton. Yes. Now I wonder if he's entered. Is uh, I think he is. He has. To. Um, who is it? Scott Melton. Um, I'm not sure. I haven't got to really uh, look at all the list of drivers. Um, this is the biggest list of entries, uh, I believe, in the past five years. So it's been it's been crazy to see this many cars in the garage area. Yeah, I know Arca's been uh, the the car counts in the past f- few years have been uh, pretty low, especially when they when they come to Toledo. But uh, is this a good sign then for for maybe the rest of the the, the season for Arca for the other tracks? I sure hope so. I really hope uh, to see more car counts, and it would be nice to see uh, more people running uh, the whole year. Um, just to to put on a show for the fans mainly. Um, I know nobody enjoys watching fifteen to twenty five cars running around. Everybody wants to see a full field. So what uh, what are your plans uh, this year? Are you gonna run any more of the or travel? and run some uh, arca things or are you going to stay around uh, stay around home um i have the opportunity to run uh more throughout the whole year um i've been offered to run talladega already um nice but the main thing is is uh i want to get daytona done and over with that's uh that's the big thing to get done um i would like to run mis but uh, you guys know how expensive racing is, and oh, it takes you. sponsors, sponsors, and we don't have any any help right now. Uh, we were very lucky to have Tommy and Kim Adams with A and B Auto and Repair. Uh, they jumped on board with uh, us this weekend, and uh, really appreciate their help. So uh, you're not looking past uh, Daytona. What uh, what's your expectations uh, for for finishing position at Daytona on Saturday? I mean, where where would you like to finish, and where do you expect to finish, and where would you be disappointed if you finished? Uh, how far back? I guess. Um, realistically, I, I hope to get a top twenty five, close to twenty. That would be really awesome. Um. But if there's a there's a wreck, I, I could finish easy in the top fifteen. Uh, if you avoid not, the wreck, though, you have to avoid yes, it. <laughs> yes, that's not that's not a far stretch at all. Um, but my goal, a win for me, um, to enjoy the experience would just be finish the race. I want to I want to complete green, white, and checkered. So, so what's your strategy going into Saturday? Are you going to be like one of those guys that kind of hang back and wait for the big one to happen and then, you know, race after that? Or are you you're going to be uh, balls out uh, the whole entire uh, 200 miles? Um, I'm probably going to definitely try and take care of the car. I don't want to tear nothing up and uh, let things play out and uh, maybe get a little racy towards the end. Sounds like a solid strategy. Yeah. <laughs> Who do you have uh, spotting for you? I have uh, Con Nicopolis with me. Um, he is, uh, I want to thank him for, he's had the opportunity to race at Daytona, and uh, he let me uh, have the number 06 to where I could have uh, not necessarily a guaranteed spot, but with so many cars to fall on a provisional if I need to. Um, so he gave up the ride and he just said, Tommy, I just want a spot for you. And I said, no problem. I said, that sounds good. And, uh, he, uh, he was on the radio with me today in practice and he's a really good spotter. And I just feel like I got a lot of good people around me right now. Awesome. Well, we'll definitely be, uh, watching that. Hopefully it doesn't get, uh, rained out. Have it, the officials, any ARCA officials said anything about, uh, you know, kind of contingency plans if it does rain uh would they back that up to i don't i, I think sunday is not looking good either for as far as i, th- weather, I think but. monday's okay tuesday's okay yeah. <laughs> i mean have they said yeah. anything about that yet or, or is it too early 
Yeah, Ron Drager said in the driver's meeting today that if uh, we do not race Saturday, um, everything is uh, based on TV. Um, they tell us when, and it would be Monday at 9 a.m. Oh, my. <laughs> Have I you mean, raced that early in the morning before? Um, Actually, yeah, I did uh, uh, last year at Springport. I think uh, I took the <laughs> green flag at 8.30 or 9 oh. o'clock in the morning. Well, I've been to races um, like that, but... But they were, was, they were still going from the night like, before. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. Well, uh, we we wish you luck, man, and we appreciate you checking in here tonight. Yep, yep. I, I just want to thank uh, definitely Tommy Adams and Kim Adams again at A&D Auto Repair. My mom and dad and uh, their company, Tommy Boy Towing. Uh, my grandparents, um, my mom and dad's mom and dad, and uh, their they're all here enjoying it with me. Um, I'm glad I got my kids and family surrounding me this weekend. Um, definitely thank Mike and Wayne Peterson. Those are the car owners. Um, it was uh, really nice to have Wayne call me and give me this opportunity to drive down here in Daytona again. And uh, Ron Drager, if uh, Ron Drager never even told Wayne Peterson about me, I would have never had a ride in ARCA to begin with. So I got to thank Ron Drager for uh, giving my name to Wayne Peterson and uh, definitely enjoying every moment that I've had with the team. He's uh, a really good guy to be around. That was very nice of yeah. Mr. Drager. So tell the crew chief, uh, get the car all tricked up. I'd like to see you qualify in, not have to go to a provisional. Oh yeah, yeah. We uh, trick, trick uh, that baby out. Oh yeah, that car got faster every lap we ran, and uh, that's when uh, Wayne said, "Let's save our stuff for qualifying tomorrow." Um, so we uh, we got a really nice fast car. We really do. Tape yeah. it, up, tape it up, tape it up. Well, don't don't overheat <laughs> it though. Uh, so it's yellow zero six, right? Yes. So yep. We- She's uh, yellow with the uh, red number. There you go. That's the car to be rooting for on Saturday or tomorrow, I guess, uh, during qualifying. Is it single car qualifying? No, they're having group uh, qualifying and up to nine cars in each group. So drafting so, could be a factor? Yeah, it, it could be. Um, we're on a clock. I believe they give us four or five minutes. So I guess we'll see what kind of head games everybody t- tries on pit road. Boy, that could be interesting. That brings back... Uh, uh memories of what like five or six years ago with nascar where they would do that and yeah. then everybody would wait until the very last second to try and get out to, and do one lap right at the end of the session is is that kind of happening uh, or do you foresee that kind of thing happening um to tell the truth i don't even know a group i'm in yet um <laughs> one of our crew guys uh went and drew pills for us and uh we had to wait they had an hour to draw pills today so uh We'll see, uh, I guess, in the morning which group I'm in, and hopefully we got some cars around our speed to where we can uh, get a good lap in. That would be crazy to see uh, a train uh, in qualifying. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's a rush down here. It's uh, You really wouldn't know what to say until you experience it all down here yourself. Awesome. We'll Been give, there lots of times. Give them hell tomorrow, man, and Saturday. Or Monday. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Ron and Scott. Yeah. We'll see you. Tommy O'Leary. We'll see you, man. Thanks, Tommy. Yep. Thank you, guys. And Mm. thank you, Tommy Adams. There you go. Tommy O'Leary, the fourth uh, running down at uh, Daytona in the ARCA 200, scheduled for Saturday. Yeah. Qualifying tomorrow. Um, Yeah. That all came about uh, just this afternoon with uh, him checking in from Daytona. So that's uh, pretty cool. We appreciate that. And uh, Dave did say uh, Scott Melton is entered in the race. All right. Who we talked to last year, and he sent us, uh, what did he send us? Donuts, right? Yeah, he, he did. The donut place, yeah. Uh, so we can root for him, too, I suppose. Uh, yeah. I mean, we'll get more donuts. I'll have to touch base with him again. Uh, back to this uh, picture here. I can't find it now. Where'd it go? I don't know. That was uh, this oh, one. Yeah. Is this the one? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that sent you to the hospital, huh? Yeah, I kind of caught the wall and... Car went up and over and up and over. Yeah. 
Okay. I think that was the one where it went up. So that, that car had a hard life, but it was okay. Where was that at? Uh, Fonda Speedway. So in uh, New York? New, yeah. It was, uh, Fonda is probably 40 miles west of Albany, New York. Right, <laughs> right off the New York Thruway, right on the Mohawk River. Uh, as a matter of fact, cars have been known to fall into the Mohawk River. From the racetrack? From the racetrack. Okay. So did something break, or did you make a mistake, or did the throttle? What, what happened here? Um, something broke. I, I can't remember what it was. Uh, there was another car that was involved, uh, and uh, we, we both wound up going to the hospital. And uh, on our way to the hospital, um, we, were, we were negotiating the price of an engine that, that the other driver had for sale. I mean, only a racer would understand. So were you, were you hurt or were you, were you okay? I was, I was okay. I, oh, okay. I, th I think uh, probably the, sh the straps got my shoulder. Yeah, and you've been having some issues with that shoulder last year, right? But yeah, you got that fixed. could be. Is that okay. related maybe? I don't know. Could have been. Okay. <laughs> uh, What's the number 40? Yeah, it's uh, 40. Uh, again, uh, that was back when only one car was allowed to have that number, and uh, if I couldn't be thirty-five, I was forty. And, Is that, uh, uh, and and then there was that car uh, when we switched it over to race at Oakshade, and I just this car raced at Oakshade. Yes. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we just painted over part of the four and turned it into a ten. Okay. Hey, budgets were tight, Scott. I got you. They're still tight. You look at that. You won a race. Yeah. How many uh, How many wins do you have, actually, Scott? In your we, career? My wife and I were talking about that the other day. Not a clue. I, it's. I, I'm sure it's over a hundred. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, obviously they. Uh, that was another car that I ran in New York. Is that you? That's me. It doesn't look like you. Oh, it's me, honest. Okay. The mustache is there, but uh, yeah. okay. Uh, does he have glasses? Of course is he does. Is that a East Coast modified again? Yes, it is. Okay. Cool. They, they call those coaches if, if you were over there. It looks like you could. Ha it has a back seat. You could have, like, passengers in there. Well, they had coupes and sedans and coaches, and that was a coach. This one really, that's, uh, we already looked at that one. Do we look at that one? That was a car. No, we didn't that, look at that. Uh, one. That's that was got a car the ad fab on it too. That was a car that I uh, actually I built that for a customer, but I drove it occasionally. And is that an, that looks like an asphalt car? It was. That was Toledo Speedway. Would that uh, have been a late model then? Uh, Sportsman. Sport, okay. I I, I mean, it looks like it would have been an Arca type car for yeah, when, its time. When, when Sonny Adams uh, owned Toledo Speedway, uh, he asked me to help him write the rules. So. I wrote the rules for that sportsman class, and it was a lot of fun. It really was. It was a great class, uh, 25, 30 cars, and they were all pretty classy cars. It looks nice. There's uh, where, where, that's uh, you and your wife. What's that, this? That uh, would have been Australia. Is that Australia? Okay. It could be. So what's it say on the hood? S something engines. N engines. Yeah, I'm not sure. <laughs> And something under the engines. I can't read that. Could have been Australia. I don't know. Okay. Let's see what else we got. Oh, this was the one I was asking you about earlier because that okay. looks like a big track. Yep. That was uh, 95, 1995. Uh, every year at the end of the season, uh, they had a big race at Syracuse, New York on the fairgrounds. Uh, on a one-mile dirt track. So that's a one-mile dirt track. One-mile dirt. And uh, in 95 and 96, they invited the late models to come along and be partners with uh, the East Coast Modifieds. Now, being in that part of New York, the, the Modifieds were, were the big guys. But the late models were turning better lap times and after 96, we didn't get invited back because you don't upstage the stars. But that, uh, was that s s close to uh, where you had lived in New York? Uh, Syracuse. Because you were, at this, in 95, you were back here in Toledo. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Okay. So you st- you had to travel back yeah. to New York for yep, this event. Yep. So we we traveled back there. Uh, Syracuse was probably a four and a half hour drive from here, from from Northwest Ohio, um, and that was my first shot at uh, running 160, 165 miles an hour. Yeah. Did you have to change your gear there? Yeah. <laughs> now, now you're not familiar with a quick change, but um, on a on the short tracks, there, there's two gears, and they're easy to take out and replace. Uh, and you always race with the big gear on top here. So when you go to Syracuse, you just flip them over and run the big gear on the bottom, and and you go from like a a 560 or a 570 to a 410, 411. That's gonna that has but, to be hard uh, on the engine. Yeah, that was. Were you flat-footed around that mile track, or did you have um, no, to lift you, you, it all? You'd roll out of it in the corners. Okay. That was my first time under, starting to understand aerodynamics in a dirt late model. The first year was we there were, drafting. There Cause was because it, it, it looks uh, like the cars were a little boxy there. Still, yeah, a little bit. There's a little arrow that, in there, and and quite honestly, that's what UMP cars should go back to. Uh, so that arrow is not the not big as much factor, of a factor. But how th- how fast do you think today's late models would would go on that mile track? You know, it's hard to say because they've got uh, they'd have to tame the cars down. They couldn't have the or, left, would, they, or would they have too much uh, downforce? They'd have too much down. downforce. Yeah, but uh, that was the the first time I, I really experienced aerodynamics, and um, I came in after the first hot lap set. Uh, in 1995, and uh, the rear deck was all crumbled up. That's right. And, and Ornery Don said, what the hell did you do to my race car? <laughs> and that's when we figured out with the, the speeds we were going, with the front end down to the ground and the back end of the car wide open, that it created a huge vacuum under the back of the car. And it just sucked the rear and, deck. And it, and it crumbled the rear deck down. Wow. So we reinforced it, and we never had that problem. And then when we got back home, we started redesigning the deck so that they were stronger. But, uh, yeah, at those speeds, um, huge amount of downforce. Without the cars being all hiked up, and uh, it, it was educational. <laughs> educational. Another oak shade win there. Yeah, that, that was the Barney Oldfield. Barney Oldfield win. What is that, 94, 92? Two. Two? Okay. Yeah. Early nineties. Uh, the uh the lady that uh was presenting the trophy was the general manager of uh the company that was sponsoring the race then. I, I don't know who the gentleman was, but uh they invited me over to their factory in in uh in Wasion and had a nice tour and Never got any sponsorship dollars, but it was a great time. It really was, and that that was that was a real highlight. The Barney Oldfield. Uh, so, uh, what what would would you consider that your biggest win ever, or what would you say is your your biggest win? Probably ever? the most fun win. That that was a good race. Um, I had some kind of hard tires on, and Shane Yoder uh, was at the shop a couple of months ago, and we were talking about it. And uh, he had dominated, as, as a matter of fact, he not only dominated that race, but he was very dominant. Uh, the flying Hawaiian. Yep. And uh, we sent, had some harder tires on. It was a longer race. And uh, about uh, 10 laps to go, uh, Shane said he looked over, and here's that damn number 35, and just chugging along. And uh, the, the right tires won that race. The most fun race I ever won, was a run what you brung race on pavement uh, with a dirt car at uh, over in Indiana at Angola Speedway. Okay. Um, and and again, I was biding my time. Um, it was the first time I had run a, a sideboard race, and uh, there were, there were a couple of guys ahead of us that um, y- you know we'd have a caution flag, and five six laps after the caution, I could see their brakes starting to glow. Uh, and I said, man, those guys were the asphalt guys. Oh or? yeah. They okay. were the, the, the par brothers and, and they were big time dominant, uh, in that part of, uh, pavement racing in that part of the country. And, uh, so I, I just kind of bided my time knowing, knowing that, uh, those glowing brakes weren't going to last real long. And, and, and it wasn't real long and 
you know, one of them slid up. I got by him. Another one slid up, and I, I think I led about the last 10 laps. And uh, we were at a, a couple of uh, races, oh, I don't know, four or five years ago, and a guy came up and said, I'm glad to see you're still racing. He said, I remember when you won that race at Angola, and uh, I, I'd pay to see that race all over again. <laughs> it, uh, and, and it was a fun race, and, and it paid pretty well. How many years ago was that? Wow. Probably 93, so 94, okay. maybe 95. I don't know. So any, uh, any champions, how many championships do you have? Uh, two at Oak shade and one in at, the late model in the late model. Okay. Um, and, uh, we were leading the points at mill stream when the plug got pulled. Uh, I Which think time? You, you may have been announcing the night 99. Yeah. Yeah. I showed up the next week. Nobody told me the plug was pulled. <laughs> like, where the hell yeah. is everybody? Yeah. We were leading the points. and So technically you kind of won that. Yeah. No, no check, no trophy. <laughs> Any asphalt championships? No. No? So this is why you like the dirt better. I don't know. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, how, how many races have I won at Sandusky on the pavement? Uh, quite a few. Yeah. Quite a few. Um. And, and they're all fun, Scott. So it's, how many do you? How many tra different tracks have you been to? Do you have any idea? Well over 100. I, if I had to guess, I'd say 120 or so in three different countries. And can you name them all? You know. <laughs> we don't have time for I, that. I, I can come close. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. You know. So Australia, Canada, U.S. Yeah. And, and I've raced uh, in Florida and Michigan, obviously, and Ohio and all over East Coast. And, yeah. Now, and you're not the only one. You mentioned Steve in your family, but uh, yeah, you've, you, there's been... Uh, My granddaughter, Stephanie, yeah. she raced. Uh, that was her first car in the uh, front-wheel drive division, old Chrysler K-Car station wagon. About 15 years ago? Probably. Maybe a little more. I, don't even, I remember the neon she drove. I don't remember yeah. this car, but uh, and she, she never uh, she kept. Uh, she didn't stay with it, did she? No, she interest wasn't there. Other things. Well, and she did have that. Uh, uh, it was a bomber at the time. Would have been a Dominator Super Stock today. She, I didn't know she ran yeah. a bomber. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that car still exists. It's in their somewhere lost in their backyard. Huh. I'll have to check that out. And uh, that son, Steve, that was one of his uh, his first race vehicles. And, uh, you know, the, the teal dirt truck. Yeah, the teal. But but that ran uh, with the, the stock car class, bombers, whatever. At was Oak it the shade? It wasn't didn't run with the sportsman. Mm. I don't think so. Maybe Steve okay. will have to tell us. Okay. Um, but it, it's kind of funny that his career over 20 years has gone pretty much full circle from a truck going back to trucks with you from a truck back to a truck because Steve and I really enjoy racing with each other and, and, and not so much, not so much my wife, but <laughs> she hates us racing each other. So, um, oh, there's Alan. What did Alan have to say? AJN engines. Yep. That's what was on the hood of that. Yep. Car. Maybe a Rayburn. Um, yep. See if there's any other questions in here. I haven't. Uh, uh, who was uh, some of the best competitors you remember through the years? Chris Patterson, Shane Yoder. Um, Chris was tough no matter where we went. Um, I, w I was deeply honored uh, one night at Mansfield. We had uh, some kind of a failure, and uh, he said, Ronnie, please drive my race car tonight. I, I, I was... <laughs> I was honored with wow. that. Yeah. Um, John Young wants to know, do you prefer big block modifieds or late models? I think he meant the East Coast. I like racing. Too. You know, if it's got I, wheels, I, I'm not sure if you, if you take a good look at the uh, big block modifieds, they have really, really changed from what was prevalent when I was racing there. But, uh, yeah, the McCready's and, uh, it's pretty interesting. One thing I wanted what to what they've evolved to. 
Uh, one thing I wanted to ask you, uh, Dave Gumby's got a question. We'll get to that. I wanted to ask you about how safety has changed uh, from when you started racing. Cause you know, there's a question about the goggles. You had the open face helmets and everything. I did see that you had the, the head sock on, right? Um, but how, how much has uh, the safety changed? Well, and, from and the head started? sock is because you're really exposed with an open face helmet. Mm -hmm. Uh, even though as wearing that, that leather monkey mask, uh, monkey man. I want to see a picture of that. <laughs> I'll have to find a picture of it. Okay. But, uh, but I mean, how, how Scott, my first race car, I was tied. You were wearing in, a t-shirt, right? I was yeah. And I was tied in with a rope the first night. Just around your waist or? Yeah. That seems safe. Well, it was. It's a man. It's amazing. You're still here. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. No, no, my worst wreck, um, was, was at Fonda Speedway, um, a hundred lapper running third, couldn't see the leaders and. Didn't feel any pressure, like three laps to go. Um, the uh, left front tire came off. The tire, not the wheel. And the whole wheel and okay. everything came off. And Fonda Speedway was built on the gravesite of the Fonda, Fonda family, and their gravesite still existed as a dirt mound going into turn three. And Weird. it was, it's, it's gone now. They, they relocated yeah, the Fonda right. family, Okay, but, but it was there. And without a left front wheel, the car made a hard right. And, uh, I, uh, I hit that dirt mound and came to an abrupt stop. And you talked about safety equipment. I was very, very comfortable in the car, but I didn't wear the, the sub strap, the, the crotch strap, the crotch strap. Right. But I, I was sitting upright like you do in a sprint car, uh, the, the dirt modifieds are kind of a cross between a late model and a sprint car. Now they were originally called heavies because they're, they were like a heavy sprint car, but I didn't have that sub strap on. And, uh, when I hit, uh, I went down underneath my lap belt, the lap belts came up and broke three or four of my ribs. Ugh. Um, and because I went forward, it loosened the shoulder strap. And that let me, my face go forward and I face planted the steering wheel. Open, and, open face helmet. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, uh, the extension cracked a couple of vertebrae in my back. So, so that um, kind of sucked. Yeah. I didn't take a ride in the ambulance. Um, <laughs> no, no, too much. And you have blood coming down your face from too macho from the, oh, I just wiped head, it off. Head sock took oh, care of that. Geez. Anyway. Um, on the ride home and, and I couldn't see to drive probably the only time in my life. I asked my wife to drive. She's a frightening driver. Okay. I'm sure she appreciates that. I, I'm sure she does. But anyway, she, she'll admit that that's probably the only time I ever let her drive. Um, about halfway home, I started going into shock. I was freezing hot summer night and like 92 degrees. And I turned the heater on wide open in the car. And your, was she a nurse back then? Uh, your in, wife in, in nursing school, I think. Okay. Did she just take you to the hospital or did she take you home? Um, no, I went home. I said, I got a warm up. So I hopped in the hot tub and that kind of settled me down a little. <laughs> the next morning I did go to the hospital and they says, Oh yeah, your nose is broken. Your ribs are broken and you've got some cracked vertebrae in your back. So how long did that? All, all of which, oh, yep. Yeah, with my nose healing, um, one of the effects was I sneezed with broken ribs. Oh, nice. Don't ever sneeze. <laughs> oh, Scott. So how long did that uh, keep you out of racing then? Probably four or five weeks. Okay. Um, did I, you wear a crotch strap from then on? Absolutely. Okay. I knew the value of that crotch strap. <laughs> Do you think that would have saved your ribs and your absolutely, nose? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. It would have done, let the lap belt do its job, which would have kept my pelvis pinned to the seat. Um, and it, it wouldn't, wouldn't have let you slide and, down. And, and it wouldn't have let me slide down. And uh, not sliding down would have kept the shoulder harness uh, tight. tight so I wouldn't have gone forward and hit the steering wheel. And without going forward, I probably wouldn't have hurt my back Jeez. and probably would have had the race car fixed a little quicker. Uh, 
Gumby had a, a question for you. Who who's going to win uh, Rookie of the Year this year? You or Steve? I, I don't running know. the trucks at well, uh, Fremont. I don't, I don't know. Um, what what's is what, there is there is there a bet between you guys? Uh, no, I, I no? wouldn't do that. Oh, um, I don't know. I mean, there there could be several guys that that could be uh, considered rookies, and I don't know if if sixty years of racing can you still be a rookie? That, that's I think so. I would hope so, but if you're running that class for the first time, right? Yeah. Uh, Rob Price wants to know. Uh, he was looking through some old pictures, came across a black and white of a number zero fiberglass Corvette late model. Do you happen to remember who this might have been? Wow. Uh, the only number the professor. Z- the only zero that I knew of. Patterson. Um. That would that, that would have run something weird would have would have been Ron Price, uh, Tino Perez's grandfather. Um, other than that, I don't know. Hmm. Oh no, I was thinking maybe Jim Fleming because he ran some kind of outlandish race cars. I don't know, Rob. Hmm. Uh, we do have some uh, text from the uh, Hammerdown Hotline from last week. Uh, really? Some questions for you. Yeah. Probably some there tonight, let's, too. Uh, let's see what we got here. What was the number thing Ron is happiest about in all of uh, racing throughout the 60 years? And what is the thing he despises the most in racing? And then we got a third part to that. We'll, we'll, we'll okay. Get to- the, wh- what I hate the most is where a late, where racing has allowed to become. And, and, and I told myself I wasn't going to get political about it, but I despise where racing has gone. Um, we talked about it last week. In, in my opinion, the top 10 guys in dirt late model racing in world of outlaws and Lucas are the ones writing the rules and the guys with the money, the guys with the money are writing the rules and um, racing needs to come back. I, and I understand the position of the racetracks. They can't afford to pay anymore. They can't afford to charge anymore at the front gate or the, or the front gate will go down. So they can't afford to pay anymore. They've got to meet their expenses. Um, everybody's in a box. Yeah. The, o- the only box that can change are rules. And they need to real, if they want weekly racing to, to exist, they need to clamp down on the rules and bring race cars back 20 years. So what, what's the, the number one thing you're happiest about in all of uh, your 60 years of the racing? The fact that it's still fun, Scott. There you go. <laughs> I, I still very much enjoy racing. I don't see hanging up my helmet. And like I said early on, my driver's suit still fits. Well, well, that leads to the third part of his question here. Uh, it's uh, And if this new... Ad- New adventure this year in racing, talking about the trucks at uh, right. Fremont. If that goes bad, does that tarnish your career at all? Yeah, a bunch. <laughs> a bunch. Because I think I can still drive, and I think I can still build race vehicles. So, yeah. So it, high it, expectations going into this Absolutely. And I don't think I'm going to be dominant. I, I'm not going in with that kind of thought at all because there's some really, really great racers in the Fremont yeah. truck division. And there's some new vehicles being built, some trucks that are being updated. And you'll be racing against your grandson-in-law. I will. Mr. Gummy. And, and he that. has been truly spectacular, Scott. Um, uh, in my estimation, he should have won last year's points championship. Um, bad luck bit him. Um, but that happens. Um, Got another uh, question here, uh, oh Ron. Boy. We always hear about drivers' wins and championships. Was there ever any wins that got away from you that still haunt you to this day, and why? Oh, there's always wins that you, you wish didn't happen. Um, the the one the, the one thing that I I wish uh, we won points championship at Oakshade ninety five ninety six. Uh, 97, um, it, it was, a, and, and I know they're listening. <laughs> um, it was a political thing. Um, Tony Marks, uh, and I were vying for the championship and we were just a couple of points apart. Um, he asked for a provisional one night and he got that provisional, 
A couple of weeks later, I asked for a provisional. He said, absolutely not. And we were one, two in points, and that would have made a difference. Um, but then you have to think back, you know. Was there a reason they didn't give you the provisional? Was it a special because, night Because they said so. Oh, okay. And, and, and I, I, I never asked. I didn't push the point. But then you, you think back, you know, what two cars could I have passed during the year? That would have made the difference. So yeah, that's one that got away and always graded me because it was one of those coulda, woulda. And you're haunted by it. I don't know. <laughs> hey, I've won points championships. I've raced in three different countries on over a hundred different racetracks. What more can you ask for, man? Have you raced dirt trucks before? I did twice. Uh, there was uh, I, I ran a dirt truck at Fremont, uh, at the John Ford Classic, at the Ford Classic, okay. Jim Ford Classic. Um, so that's not enough to discount in, in, you from in, being in the four a rookie. Realm. It wasn't a points race, so I never yeah. raced a points race uh, in a Fremont truck. And then I ran uh, that same truck uh, at uh, Sandusky. Uh, they did a, a special end of the season race and. I wrecked it. Actually, wait, was that that was the when you hit the the trees? Yeah, it was. It was. <laughs> I remember yeah, that. I now. collected some wood. I forgot but, about that. But uh, the truck ahead of me exploded an engine. I hit That's his right. oil and. And I was thinking earlier, you know how we had that match race with you, me, and uh, Jerry Keezer yeah. a few years ago. Now we can have a match race, at least you and me, equal. With uh, your truck in, in my Game car, Game right? on, Hammer. Right. Game on. Well, I'll talk to the powers that be because there's probably going to be at least two events we'll be at the same track at. Okay. At least two. And maybe, uh, well, I've, I'm pretty sure you're going to be at Sandusky as well I'm, for that I'm October almo- 19th show. I'm almost Maybe certain. we can see if uh, we can do a match race on pavement. Works for me. I want the inside, though. Just bring it. Can I get boy. the inside? Just br- um, Whatever. Okay. You got more experience than me, just a few more years. And, and and by October 19th, I'll have a few laps in the trucks. <laughs> All right. You're on. Okay. Uh, any other uh, photos you wanted to show? Sure. Oh, That's boy. pretty much all I had here yeah, before we get to some racing news, give away some uh, yeah, I, I think stickers. We pre- and- I think we pretty much covered okay. that. We can give away some stickers and some pizza. 60 years, though. 60 more? Probably not 60 more. Probably not 60 more, but, uh, but you're ten, n- 10 more wouldn't surprise me. Okay. All right. You're going to be uh, Red Farmer's still racing, isn't he? Yeah. Red Farmer's my hero. Is he? <laughs> there you go. Uh, speaking of uh, Ron Miller, uh, give Ron Miller Race Cars a call, 734-856-7223 for race cars, parts, safety equipment, service, uh, pre-filters, uh, transmission service, uh, whatever you need. Yeah. He's got it right there. We worked on a quarter midget this week. I saw, I saw that in the shop. That looked pretty yeah, cool. You yeah. put that bar in or yeah, something? Yeah, yeah. He needed a bar welded into the halo on the roll cage, and uh, we took care of that. So quarter midgets, dirt cars, asphalt cars, classic cars. Yeah. Rambler race cars. And you're going to – any uh, plans to retire from that anytime soon, or is that uh, kind of go along with the, the love of racing? Well, I don't know. When I first started racing, Scott, George Folk was the the parts guy. He 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 sold parts and tires. He was just up into Michigan, and uh, he, he was an absolute fixture in racing. And uh, I, I remember him uh, and his two dogs. He'd, he'd come out from the house, and the two dogs would be barking at the fence, and he'd let you in, and you'd go into his race shop. And Sounds uh, like you. Yeah, I, I've, I have become George Folk. <laughs> Sounds very familiar to me. Dale Cole <laughs> wants to know when he uh, can get some uh, sheet metal from you. Um, you can message him when we're done with the show. That's it. Um, before we get to a giveaway, we got a little bit of racing news here to uh, take care of. So let's bust that out and get that out. Latest racing news. Spire Motorsports Legacy Motor Club and RFK Racing ran a NASCAR test last Thursday at uh, Bristol Motor Speedway. Did you uh, hear about that? I did. They uh, had a water truck spray the the track down. Uh, And back in 
2021, NASCAR began testing rain tires on oh, short tracks. Remember I that? I see where this is going. Those tests began on uh, flatter tracks like Richmond and Martinsville. Uh, for 2023, NASCAR opened the rule book to begin racing on wet tires in damp conditions on short tracks under one mile. Unlike wet racing on a road course, the uh, short track rain package doesn't utilize wipers, mud flaps, or lights. Uh, so NASCAR still doesn't run on ovals in wet conditions um, when it's real wet. They'll run in damp conditions on, on those ovals, according to uh, what's going here. But, uh, uh, yeah, the damp conditions uh, drastically – being able to race with the, the damp conditions will drastically reduce the time it takes to restart an event due to a rain shower. Sure. Because once they, once they get that standing water off the track, the track can still be damp. But, well, and, and Bristol is a, a, a big ball. But – well, I, let me finish here. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, Bristol Motor Speedway and Dover Motor Speedway are both currently excluded from that option of running on damp. Uh, the high banking creates some concerns. However, NASCAR is testing out the package on the high banks of Bristol. Um, they deployed the water truck to spray the track before the cars took the half mile to see how things work out. And no, no the, answers. No, no real answers yet as to uh, if uh, they, I think it was just kind of a let's see what happens kind of yeah. thing. Yeah. So. Uh, Millstream Speedway has added another show. This is sort of breaking news. It's not from a couple while ago. It didn't really make big news because the Great Lakes Super Sprints were the main event of that. Right. October 6th, Sunday afternoon, the uh, Great Lakes Super Sprints, the 360 wing sprints, will be at Millstream Speedway, along with late models. Ooh. And stocks and trucks. Really? You didn't know this? Whoa. Did be, you know this? Be still, no, I didn't. No, October, they posted. It was kind of hidden in their post, but yeah, stocks, trucks, late models, and Great Lakes Super Sprints Sunday, October sixth. I reached out to Corey because, of course, the first thing I see when I see stocks and trucks is, is this a showdown series event? Uh, Corey had no idea about it. <laughs> what? Like, I'm like, go check out Millstream's uh, Facebook page, and that's a rich farmer thing. I get, uh, I get a message back. It says, uh, it could be. As of right now, it's not, but this it could, could be, be cool. So, uh, yeah, but uh, stocks and trucks at uh, Millstream on Sunday, October Sunday, 6th. October sixth, along with the Great Lakes Super Sprints and late models. And oh. I, I, there's no uh, rules that I've that were posted as of yet, so I'm not. Sure. I'm assuming it's. Well, I don't want to assume anything. It's just stocks and right. trucks. Uh, we'll we'll ha- give you more details as they come, but that's still yeah. Quite because a ways some off. of the rules. Are, are vary from your weekly show. Mm-hmm. Well, when they used to run the the Strux, it was a right. kind of a run bring, your bring, bring your rule book. bring your rule book. The Lima cars had to run Lima rules. The Oakshade cars had to run Oakshade rules. Fremont trucks right. had to run theirs. Uh, Eldora, same thing. So, but I with the uh, Showdown series rules, the stocks are pretty much uh, bound by the Oakshade rules for the super stocks. Uh, other the asphalt cars, though. Part of that showdown series, they they're kind of their home track rules, right? So it's a little complicated. We'll figure it out. We'll we'll get the details on that. Wasn't there a carburetor difference too? Uh, uh the I think the Fremont guys can now run four barrels for right. this, for, the trucks, on on the showdown race for the showdown race. Okay, correct. yeah, and, and we don't, as far as I know, and we don't know about Sandusky. The Sandusky is not a showdown event. I wonder if it'll be showdown rules. I think it is. Okay. I think it is. Well, we uh, that was back in December. We talked to Chris. We'll, right. we'll have to talk to him again about that. Um, I-96 Speedway released their schedule, which includes a lot of late model shows on American Racer tires, at least to start out the season, which has uh, caused a little stir on uh, social media there. Um, they say that uh, they could switch to uh, UMP Hoosier rules if uh, not enough late models show up, but uh, because but of only their, two weeks because their agreement with uh, uh, the other tracks up there that Crystal, run Crystal and Mar- Tri City is it Tri City? I think well, yeah. the one what are the ones that the late models run American Racers. Right. Uh, they're kind of trying to honor that, but if they don't get enough, they they they'll switch to the UMP Hoosier rule. Uh, but there's a lot of uh, late model shows on that schedule. Uh, in addition to uh, Great Lakes Super Sprints, IMCA, Modified Street Stocks, Pro Stocks, Four Cylinders, Mini Wedges, uh, schedule kicks off on April 19th, and uh, 17 Friday night shows are scheduled 
for I-96. I'm kind of conflicted on that AR versus Hoosier thing because the ARs, the American Racer tires. That's your tire that you sell. And that kind of goes right in line with one of the things our that the dirt late models are facing is is huge prices on weekly prices on tires and the american racer is a much longer lasting tire so it it goes and last week we talked about the cobra tires yeah that american racer goes a long way in reducing tire costs i don't know IndyCar announced that they are moving their season finale race in uh, Nashville to Nashville Speedway instead of uh, the streets of Nashville, as it has been the last few years. Uh, I guess there's complications that have come up because uh, they're building a new stadium for the Tennessee Titans down there. Right. Uh, So that would complicate the road course having, making it have to be moved somewhat. So they just decided uh, they're going to move the event to Nashville Speedway, which they conveniently have down there. So. Uh, that's IndyCar news. Sandusky Speedway also releasing their schedule today. That's more breaking news. Actually, that was only like a few hours ago. Ooh. Uh, they kick off uh, the season April 27th, Saturday night, with uh, must-see racing sprints in Midwest Lights, uh, Pure Stock, and All-American Series. Uh, in June, they have all their shows are one dollar admission. Really? Yeah. The they entire all, month of they, June. They all there. I think there was four shows in June. They all. Uh, all one dollar admission shows uh, other series on the schedule include the outlaw modified sprint series crs super trucks uh, ohio wheelman super stocks midwest mod or ohio wheelman modifieds uh, and then things uh, finish up uh with the uh the thing we made the uh, announcement for back in december the october 19th nightmare clash with the fremont dirt trucks versus oak shade super stocks versus asphalt street stocks october 19th um, CRS uh, Super Truck Series in action and uh, what the the compact the dirt touring series, I forget the yeah. name of, but that those classes will, will be in action and uh, full schedule. You can check it out. It's on their Facebook page right now. It's, it wasn't on their uh, Sandusky Speedway dot com page. Probably is yet. by now. But yeah, earlier a few hours ago it wasn't there. Right. They still had the hangover race thing on there. But uh, if you want to see the schedule, you can check it out on their Facebook page. Just search uh, Sandusky Speedway. And that is it for the uh, racing news for this week. We do, and I haven't seen a lot of folks uh, with the hashtag DCR. There's so been a lot. Let's see how many we got. We got 24 entries so far. Okay, and we're uh, we're getting close to doing that drawing for that. This is a. a Supersized edition of the Hammer Down Racing Report because it's a special celebrating 60 years. Of, we kind of knew that year. might happen. Yeah. But uh, let's, uh, we're going to do how many in just a second. Before we do that, I uh, got to mention the Hammer Down Hotline. If you want to call, leave a message, uh, just like some of these other folks have done, feel free to do so. Just call the Hammer Down Hotline at the number that you can't see because I always leave that on there 419 318 3081. 419 419- 318-3081. Call or text anytime, day or night, and uh, we'll uh, read things back, play it back. We did have uh, one other Hammer Down Hotline text. Really? That, uh, it wasn't directly related to you, so I was saving oh. it to uh, right now. And that is uh, the one I talked about a little bit earlier. Football season is over. Racing season's here. Let's go. That's it. There you go. So, uh, how many? Let's do that. Let's uh, let's. Do that. How many? So last week's how many was how many Lucas Oil late model dirt series cars would compete Saturday at East Bay, and it was a bunch. Sixty five th- was the magic number. I, I think a lot of guys wanted to be involved with the last Lucas Oil race. The winter last Winter Nationals. Winter it's not Nationals. the last. Yeah, last That's Winter right, Nationals because they're, they're coming coming, coming, they're coming back in the fall. Yeah. Maybe if it's not raining. Yeah. <laughs> We'd be optimistic there. Uh, yeah, so you said 42, and I had to one-up you on that. Yeah, you just said 43 because well. I figured it would be more than 42, so uh, I, I got you there. Our listeners, uh, nobody picked 65, but we did have one person pick 64. Ooh. We did have one person pick 60, uh, 66, excuse me. So we're going to have to spin the Big D's pizza wheel to determine who's going to win this week's Big D's pizza, and you're two... Uh, two uh, Folks up for that are Bill Daniels, who guessed 64, and Trevor Hunt, who picked 66. 
So here we go to determine this week's how many. Tighten big, your seat belts, folks, because there's only two. Winner. Yeah. It's looking like it's going to be Trevor Hunt. I don't think it's going to get back around to Bill. Nope. There you go. Trevor Hunt, congratulations. You are the Big D's Pizza winner for how many? You have 30 days to claim your pizza from uh, Big D's over there. Get with me or Dean or Big D's and uh, go get your pizza. That's all there is to it. Um, so how many for this week? Yeah. Not sure what I did here. Somehow I got this little. Uh, Do you remember go. what you did? There, I clicked something on there. It was messing oh, up. Okay. Uh, so this week's how many? Um, which uh, didn't print out on here for some reason, but I remember what it was. Going oh, to good. Be, so I'm gonna have to write it. Now. Oh, I think I I put it here, but I didn't put it in my prep. There you go. How many caution flag periods? How many caution periods? I guess uh, including the stage breaks. This would include this. So there'd be at least, what, is there two or three stage breaks? Yeah. So it'd be at least that There'll many. there be two breaks. Yeah. Not laps, just period. How many caution periods will there be in uh, this uh, this year's Daytona 500, be it Sunday or Monday or whenever they, they run it? So and, and, and since you won last <laughs> week, you get the distinct privilege of going first. Yeah, well, I'm writing it down here so I remember because I didn't put it in my prep. So, uh, yeah, let's. Uh, if uh, you want a chance to win a Big D's Pizza, just put your guess in. Uh, just put a number in the comments of our Facebook Live or YouTube Live. Um, we'll give you until, uh, what time's the race start on Sunday? It's supposed to be at 2.30. We'll say noon on Sunday. Sounds good. Let's go right up till 2.30. Right up till 2.30 on uh, Sunday because you, you're not going to know how many caution flags. Right, that's true. So we'll give you right up until race time, 2.30 Sunday, local time for Daytona. Uh, get your guess in. If we have a tie, we will uh, spin the Big D's pizza wheel. Um, it doesn't matter if you go over or under. Whoever's closest uh, will win that uh, Big D's. So there you go. You can't change your guess once it's in. You're locked in. Can't guess more than once or you're disqualified. Black flag. All right. I've stalled long enough. I'm going to go with uh, we're, we're hovering in the right around between like 7, 8, 9, 10, 6, I see, 10. I don't know. It could end. It could be rain shortened, so maybe they won't go the whole distance. Uh they'll. Uh, I think Monday, their weather, whatever day yeah. they pick, I think the weather is going. Well, I'm saying if they can get it in on the Sunday and then it rains I and they pass halfway. Happen, but okay. I don't know. I'm going to go with eight because I seem to like that number. Yeah. Eight S. No, that would be weird. <laughs> <laughs> there was eight S cautions. Uh, what are you going with? Nine? I'm going one under you. Oh, you're going under? Oh, yeah. You think there's not going to be that many cautions? I don't think so. Okay. So there you now, go. If you were ca counting caution laps, then that, that could be a, that could be a big number. But, uh, like I said, you have until Sunday at two 30. So if you listen to us on the, the podcast, you have time to get in on, uh, that drawing or, uh, not the drawing, the drawings coming up for the, uh, window sticker it's past my bedtime we don't usually go this late <laughs> um yeah so uh you have until 2 30 on sunday to get your guess in if uh you're listening to this on the podcast just find the facebook live or the youtube uh put type in the comments just type a number and uh you're good to go so with that i'm predicting i'm predicting they're gonna play nice okay let's do uh this let's do uh, our uh, big d's pizza racing menu and then we'll draw for the uh, winner of the sticker here You've got just a couple of minutes. Hashtag DCR. There you go. Yeah, we'll, we'll put you that You can little, be the next big winner. Put that reminder. If you haven't done, if you've already done that, you're good. You're all set. You don't need to do anything. If you haven't typed hashtag DCR in the comments of the Facebook Live or YouTube Live, do it right now because we are going to uh, give that away right after we check out our uh, Big D's Pizza Racing menu. This weekend, Big D's Pizza Racing Menu. So the uh, World of Outlaws Case Construction Equipment Late Model Series, uh, they get uh, things started tonight. Dirt Car Nationals at Volusia Speedway Park. Uh, tonight through Saturday, 15th through the 17th. NASCAR Cup Series in action tonight. They had the, the first duel at uh, 7 o'clock this evening. Second duel is scheduled to start in about 10 minutes, so we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll wrap things up before then. Uh, 
That's at Daytona. That is on uh, FS1. You can watch that. Tomorrow night, crash some truck series action. The Fresh Farms Florida 250 at Daytona. That'll be Friday night, 7.30 on FS1. The Arc Menard Series event scheduled for um, Saturday. The Daytona Arca 200. That's going to be at 1.30 on FS1. Xfinity Series later in the day, the United Rentals 3. United Rentals 300. That'll be at 5 o'clock also on FS1. This is assuming they don't get rained out. And then uh, Sunday, the Daytona 500. The What do we call that? The It's the NASCAR Super Bowl. Yeah, the great washout. Yeah. The great American race. That's what I was trying to that's say. That's it. Uh, that'll be Sunday, 2.30 on Fox. Uh, action down south, way south, like Australia south. Esperance Motor Raceway. Cal versus Esp Challenge. Oh, that's like the two tracks challenge in uh, Kalgoorlie. 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 Forget the R. On Saturday, February 10th. 10th. Wait, that's not it. Why does I say February 10th? I don't know. That might be, uh, we'll have to double check that. Could be a typo. That could be a typo, yeah. Uh, Perth Motorplex, second annual uh, Cranky Boys shootout featuring sprint cars, limited sprint cars, Formula 500s, late models. That's uh, f- Friday and Saturday. It's today and if that's you're a, in that, Australia. And that's a big deal race. Uh, February 16th and 17th. Is that where uh, Ronnie was running? Yes. Because she was uh, taken last weekend off. Yep. So good luck to uh, to uh, Veronica. Red hot there. Ronnie. Yeah. Albany Speedways, V8 Pro Modifieds plus uh, support classes will be racing on Saturday, February 17th. And uh, that is your Big D's Pizza Racing Menu. Let's give away the uh, limited edition Hammer Down window sticker. Okay. Hammer Down Army Racing window, whatever it is. Hashtag DCR. If you haven't done that, we're going to draw right now. So you have until I switch over to uh, do that. And, and to our friends who are waiting in the mail, checking the oh. mailbox every day, I'll get them out. I've just been outrageously busy. Dale says that they're already five laps into the second duel. What's up with that? Let's, let's wrap this up. Uh, we need to do this one. We need to do. Oops. I'm hitting the wrong buttons. Here we go. I think we got that on the screen now. 30 entries. So you have a 1 in 30 Ooh, chance cool. to get this. You have to uh, pick it up from Ron Miller Race Cars unless you can convince him into mailing it to you, which apparently some people have. Who's it going to be this week? Nancy Shanehour is the winner. Hmm. Congratulations, Nancy. I think she's won before, hasn't yeah, she? Yeah, probably pick it up from John Young. Probably could do that. Could make arrangements. Uh, let us know. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to give it to Ron. Uh, but we can probably make some arrangements somehow here. So congratulations, Nancy Shanauer. We, uh, if you didn't win, don't fret. We have more to give away next week of the uh, limited editions. You can always buy the uh, the regular Hammer Down Racing Report sticker from uh, DCR Graphics. Just give them a call at the number scrolling at the bottom of your screen. Five dollars, he'll mail it out to you. So shut up, Scott. There's a lot of racing on TV. I want to go home. Is that? That, so what are you saying? Is, I, I is know. it time to go? <laughs> it's my fault that we've gone this long. Sorry it, about that. It is a little bit. I got I, there's like things on the screen. I can't click on things. What is this? I don't know. I've lost control of this. Here we go. Okay, now, now we can get out of here. <laughs> Thanks to associate producer Dave Kemmer, contributors uh, John Young. Bob Stazak, make sure to like us on Facebook. Follow us on X at Hammer Report. Follow us on YouTube. Listen to us on your favorite podcasting platform, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, whatever it is. Uh, Check us out at HammerdownRacingReport.com. Information on the Hammerdown Army there, if you want to be part of that this year. Get all the details on that. Make sure to rate and review us. Share us with your friends. Uh, Rate and review us on your favorite, uh, whatever podcasting platform you're using. That helps us out. Thanks to our sponsors, DCR Graphics, Dominator Race Products, Oakshade Raceway, Ryan Miller Race Cars, and Freeze Frame Photos. Thanks to our guests this week. Ryan Miller, 60 years of racing and uh, still going strong. Scott, it doesn't seem that long ago that we celebrated 50 years of racing. When was that, 10 years ago? Uh, just about, yeah. Nancy says she'll pick it up at the shop, so here you go. Okay. You can have that. 
Uh, next week, uh, working on a, a special guest next week. Uh, Ooh. It's going to be a surprise as of right now because uh, still wait. He's I don't. Know. They're busy this week. I don't. They got know, a lot of racing it, going on. Could be fun. Could be. So uh, make sure to tune in next Thursday, seven o'clock, live on Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Till then, go enjoy all the racing this weekend. Hopefully, we don't get washed out. And uh, we'll see you back here next Thursday evening. Thanks for hanging in there with us, folks. Good night, all. Bye. You have been listening to the Hammer Down Racing Report, available on demand on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcasting platform.